Hey, Luke, uh, great to see you, my friend. You too, Dale. How are you doing today? I'm doing okay. Uh, you know, great not to be in pain. I, I you know, uh, really, you know, dominates your life if you're like that. You know, you have pain and makes trading look like, you know, who cares? <laughs> you know, I just want this headache to go away. So uh, um, I'm happy to hear that. Yeah. So uh, here I am. I'm back. Uh, you know. Uh, it's like trading, right? You have to um, work hard and live through adversity to rise to a new level. That's right. And we we learn uh, the the most when we make mistakes. If we embrace our failures, right? That's uh, right. That's that's when we learn. And uh, I know that everyone's going to learn from you today because I went over your stream and you're covering some really uh interesting tar uh topics and uh one when we start i mean gold has been stealing the show since bitcoin's moving sideways right now and gold made new all-time highs you talk about that china is able to set the gold price can you explain that to me and our community uh how they're able to do that yeah it, it's in essence um through the law of one price so the law of one price says you can't have two different commodities priced in two different currencies or two different commodities priced, let me start again, one different currency or one different price of something in two different currencies priced differently, X, the FX differential. Um, and so historically, um, when we're seeing the Chinese buy a lot of gold, that's not necessarily new. That's the Chinese people have, they own a lot of gold. They buy a lot of gold. They're buying a lot of gold, relatively speaking right now, but that's never affected the price like this before. Um, the difference, and really it's, it's you know, I wrote a report in September last year highlighting that uh, the title of the report was China just used gold to defend the Yuan. Um, and it was kind of ridiculed by some people at the time. They're not laughing anymore. Um, the way they can do this is historically when the Chinese people buy a lot of gold, the price of gold would go up in yuan terms, right? Supply, demand. Uh, and the Americans control the price of gold historically, the Westerners, the UK and the US. A uh, number of different ways that happens. That's a separate discussion. Uh, if the price of gold in dollars is not moving and the price of gold and yuan is moving higher, what that's telling you is through the gold pivot, the yuan is falling against the dollar. Uh, and that starts to become a problem in short order when oil and commodities are only bought in dollars because China has to get dollars to buy oil and commodities to fuel their economy. And so buying gold paradoxically leads to a weakening in the yuan, which leads to a, uh, a need to run down their dollar FX reserves to buy oil and commodities. Eventually, they run out of FX reserves. They have a currency crisis. The currency collapse. They have an economic crisis. Kind of basically what we saw in Southeast Asia in 1997, 1998. Right. Thai Everything changes if you can buy oil and commodities in Yuan, if you're China. This is the part that I think most people still aren't even thinking about yet. And it's why I think gold is ultimately going way higher. Because most people aren't even aware of this yet. And the implications of, gold, of, of oil and commodities being bought in Yuan by China. And it doesn't have to be a lot of them. It doesn't have to be the majority of them. In commodities, the marginal ton prices the whole, right? That's why oil exactly. went to negative 37 a barrel in April of 2020. It wasn't right. because all 105 million barrels produced that day uh, were worth negative $37. You had a <laughs> tiny little part yeah. that couldn't find a home for storage. And so the entirety went to negative 37 a barrel. Okay, so 
now that China can buy, you know, the marginal ton of oil and commodities around the world is undoubtedly priced in yuan. In fact, the head of JP Morgan's trading desk was quoted in the Wall Street Journal in December saying it was around 20% of the world's barrels last year were done in yuan. Wow. Uh, gold rising in yuan says something very, very different. It says gold buys more oil and commodities in China than it does in dollars in London and New York. And so capital flows where it's treated best. Gold is just capital. So what happens? Gold starts leaving London. It starts leaving New York. And it starts heading toward China, as does oil and commodities. And so it is really China using the law of one price in an elegant way uh, the price in question is the gold to oil ratio. Um, yeah, how many say that, but gold is an oil currency now. Gold's an oil currency, right? So if gold buys you 25 barrels of oil in China and 20 barrels of oil in New York or in London, guess where the gold's going to go? It's going to yeah. go to China. And, and, and at some point, China starts to set the price. And we we've reached that we've reached that point, in my view. Okay. Empirically, well, we reach that view. We can see yeah. it. And also, you bring up J.P. Morgan. Uh, uh, they made a visit to the Shanghai Exchange, which was Jim Sinclair's idea to emancipate gold from the paper market. Interesting. Interesting. Yeah, that, and, and someone pointed out to me that uh, Deutsche Bank had been there two weeks before J.P. Morgan, the head of their metals desk, HSBC, yeah. the week before J.P. Morgan. Yeah. Um, there is a, um, there's a fact pattern emerging where I, I, and, and oh, by the way, this is all happening as Janet Yellen is effectively telling you she's going to devalue the dollar. Like if she was any clearer, she would be at a podium saying, Hey, wall street, I'm going to devalue the dollar. Uh, okay. that's what I'm talking to the Chinese about. Um, so I think that's a really positive overlay for gold as well. Yeah. And then China, uh, that would assist China, too, because they did spend a lot on reserve in reserves to support the yuan last year. Didn't they? They did. They they did. And, and, and I don't you know, I when so when you hear Yellen say we need we need China to not dump product, we need China to not flood the market with cheap goods. That. Right. So so many people are still saying, well, China needs to devalue the yuan. China's running a 30 year manufacturing surplus and they're running a, a near record current account surplus with the world. Uh, why do they need it? They, do they need the surplus higher? They, 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 they're fine. Um, so how, how is Yellen communicating this, Luke? Because I just had an attendee say that their standard statement from Treasury has always been during the biggest bear markets in the dollar, we have a strong dollar policy. I would uh, I would go to so go two weeks ago, there was a Wall Street Journal article. Janet Yellen missed the first China shock. Can she stop the second in it? She said uh, that the economic orthodoxy of the United States of the last 40 years has been wrong. She said, standard economics and my entire career, I would have said, if somebody wants to send you cheap goods, you would you should send them a thank you note. Her quote directly, I would never, ever again send a thank you note. Um, National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan in February was quoted in Politico, a speech he gave to the Brookings Institute in 2023, announcing the end of the last 40 years of U.S. economic and trade policy uh, set, and, and a political magazine saying in not so many words, uh, uh, laying out a plan to make America great again. Now, this is Biden's national security advisor. Wow. Um, so this is in th two and a half months, not even. Uh, national security advisor, interesting. Secretary of the Treasury, very interesting because her purview is the dollar. So if you and then, you know, read the statement she made coming out of Beijing um, two weekends ago, 
talking about a plan that she had arrived with to protect American firms and workers. Stronger dollar isn't going to protect American firms and workers. Not a chance. How does that help? You can't export. Exactly. So, uh, do you think do you think her vis uh, the G's visit to San Francisco a few months ago was about this as yes. well? And it didn't really work out. The dollar just you know kept grinding higher. So it took another trip for her to reassure. Uh, the I, it's Chinese. a complicated. Yeah, it's complicated. I think the San Francisco uh, meeting was to lay out the bones of a San Francisco accord. And we wrote that for our clients at, at the time. Uh, basically, a, a new currency deal to weaken the dollar uh, against the yuan specifically. Uh Mechanically, there are a number of things, all else equal in a vacuum, the dollar should go to infinity <laughs> based on the debt okay. outstanding, the euro dollar market, which is basically unreserved and all dollar debt. Um, yeah, un, un, left to its own devices, the dollar basically goes to infinity and the Dow and the S&P and the treasury market go to zero. Yeah. Uh, like, that's, that, that is, that is uh, given the debt levels where we're at. People will just sell stocks, bonds, everything to cover their dollar short as the dollar goes higher. And we started to get into that in the third quarter of last year. We might be right on the verge of that effect happening now. So That's a for threat from Japan, isn't it? Uh, for uh, the, all the treasuries they sit on? Yeah. Uh, oh, that Japan. they, yeah, to support the yen. Uh, so, uh, you know, weak yen has th those implications as well, right? Yeah, that's right. So there's... There's market forces that are very powerful. Um, they can ultimately be countervailed. <laughs> it's, but the problem is they're so powerful, they're not going to be countervailed by hints and nudges, et cetera. I think ultimately what we're going to see is the dollar continue to be somewhat firm, managed, the Japanese trying to survive, the Southeast Asians trying to survive, everyone kind of trying to manage this dollar strength. And I think gold's going to keep going up. And I think at some level, I don't know if it's $2,600, $2,800, $3,000, all of a sudden the dollar is going to start to weaken. Yeah. And people are going to say, why is that happening? That's nothing. And they're going to go back to buying the dollar. And gold's going to go to $3,100, $3,200, and the dollar is going to keep weakening. And people aren't going to understand that. And then that's – so it's going to take this big – to get the dollar weaker – it's going to have to take convincing the markets that we are in a new monetary <clears throat> regime. regime. Yeah. And that, that full stop. Time. Yeah. Gold is gold. The United States has now blessed that gold is taking over from treasury bonds as the, as the uh, global reserve new, asset, primary gold reserve safe asset. haven. The new, a new safe, safe haven. haven, exactly, and we're seeing that in markets right now. People don't believe it, and and to be clear, in the short run, you're going to see gold up, you're going to see treasury yields up sharply, and that's going to drive the dollar up sharply in the short run, and that's kind of how it'll go until the yields and treasury market break something like they did. You know, we've been seeing this, and yes, China's been under pressure, but the fact is that. The U.S. banking system and or treasury market has broken five times since 2019, and China really hasn't broken once. They've strained. They've kind of had to do some things, but it's um, – uh, they they if you would have said, hey, rates are going to do what they do, dollar is going to do what it's going to do, rates are going to do what they're going to do, who breaks first, U.S. banks and treasury market or China? And 99 out of 100 people would have told you in January 2022 it'll be China. And it hasn't been. So okay. it's it's going to be, at that point, once we get the next episode of Treasury market dysfunction driven by the strong dollar, higher rates, uh, then you're going to have to move back towards some sort of QE or dollar liquidity injection to, to prevent a, a catastrophe. And that's going to happen with CPI at four. And the dollar is going to weaken. And then we might have to go through that iteration again maybe another couple times but at some point in that in in that iteration in that process of 
the shift to gold as primary reserve asset being blessed by the U.S., which I think is what's happening, um, people are going to get the message, which is, oh my gosh, they want a lower dollar. They're going to manage the tre treasury market. There is no higher for longer. The only thing that's higher for longer is inflation. Okay. A and uh, they're not going to raise rates into that. And I can't own the dollar. How can I own the dollar in that? And the answer is you can't. But until we hit that point, I think we're going to kind of be in this this regime we're in. A lot of people are using the wand for carry trades now. Any comment on that? Um, it's a bad idea. I think. Uh, <laughs> do you? Okay. I do. I think that I think the yuan's going to rise against the dollar. Um, okay. But I think it's you know I think the pivot's going to be through gold. Uh, I think okay. that I think Yellen's probably sitting down with the Chinese and going. You need to strengthen the yuan, and you can read chapter and verse. Just Google what the Chinese have said over the last ten years about the Plaza Accord and what it did to the Japanese. There, and in my opinion, there is zero chance that the Chinese are going to sit down uh, with the Americans and revalue the yuan higher against the dollar like the Japanese did. I think the conversation is that's nice. Yes, we agree. You need a weaker dollar. You want a weaker dollar? You let gold go. Stop sitting on gold. Okay, interesting. So uh, you bring up rates, and this was the big rally that we had last October. I guess you know it's a weekly chart, so it doesn't yeah. And that was Yellen, bad. by the way, right? That was where Yellen, yeah. right, the very bottom of that chart was Yellen. They changed the packages. Everybody. Exactly. Yeah. They moved to the front end. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, I at first, Luke, I was thinking, you know, we're just correcting this advance and we're going to get another one. But here in Utah, it look, I would more look for maybe we're going to challenge highs and yields. Again. Oh, I think we will. I think we so, will. And so because there are a lot of people trying to buy bonds looking for this right now. Oh, you don't think that's going to happen? That's a terrible idea. In my All opinion. right. You know what? Uh, I, I like the way. Uh, you don't uh, hedge yourself and say, well, <laughs> I, you know, <laughs> I'm in the money. I wrote the clients two weeks ago, two and a half weeks ago. I said, you know, it's time to buy puts on TLT again. Oh, it's time to buy okay. puts on the long bond again. It's time to buy yeah. puts on the NASDAQ. If you're a short-term trader right. based yeah. on, um, look, the dollar where it is, 10-year yields breaking above 4.3%. And yeah. oil going over roughly 82. And yeah. like yeah. that's the kiss of death. Um, we're going to go right back to the August, September regime until they weaken the dollar. Okay. And they'll do, they'll weaken the dollar because they're not going to let the treasury market break. Remember, the treasury market crashed in the third quarter. TLT was down 20% in a single quarter in 3Q23. I don't care what market you're talking about, 20% a quarter is a crash. The treasury it market, is. like the most important market yeah. in the world, that's, that's then that's that's what's going to yeah. happen again. Like and that that is, I mean, look at the move index. Have you seen the move index in the last no, three I, days? No, it's exploding. Oh my god, right? it's yeah. exploding, and it is almost to levels where they From come last in with October. That. Yeah. Okay. All right. So uh, uh, Luke is uh, uh, neutral. To bear, I'm kidding. Bear, very bearish bonds, <laughs> strongly. Yeah, and, and, yeah, and strongly okay. bearish. And now, to be clear, like I think, I think as it gets near five, is probably like it is probably where they come in and say no mas. Uh, and I and I and we have this critical moment coming up. What's today? The seventeenth. Two weeks from yesterday, or two weeks from today, with the quarterly refunding. Yeah. You know, one way or another, they're going to show their hands. They're either going to, um, they're either going to can you know continue to extend the long end, you know, sort of do nothing, right? So if they like like the thing that nobody's talking about with this ten year sell off, with this long bond uh -huh. sell off, is we're not we're barely issuing any long bonds as a share. The bond uh -huh. on the long end is ripping higher. And we're barely issuing any no, and no relative new supply to historical. There. Yeah. Barely, barely. So like if they come in and issue a bunch more or say they're going to issue a bunch more in two weeks in this quarterly refunding, Katie yeah. bar the door, number one. So that's, that'll be terrible for bonds, terrible for risk, great for the dollar. Um, I think the thing that will confuse everyone is gold will rip on that as well. Because well, gold's, gold's been ripping with a strong dollar and higher yields, uh, especially. Yeah, and that's month. emerging. Yeah, 
That's just emerging market currency crisis sections. Gold's telling you the U.S. government has is is in the early days of a currency and debt crisis. That's all gold's saying, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, in addition to becoming an oil currency, but um, the second option they'll have is saying, you know what, we're going to move more to the short end again, and that will be a huge tell. That will be we have a debt problem. Yeah. Sell dollar yields will probably rally on that, like they did when Yellen did it at the end of October last year, markets will moon, Bitcoin will moon, gold will moon, commodities will moon. Um, and the third option, which we saw a little bit of, a, you know, it's almost like uh, the river card. It's not the river card yet, but we've, we've seen, you know, the flop from tax receipts two days ago. They were pretty good. I thought they were going to be pretty good because stocks were up a bunch. So yeah, it's right. Capital gains. Yeah. <laughs> there's a, there's a, uh, um, you know, the third option is, is she comes out and says, hey, receipts were decent. Issuance is going to be down a bit versus where we thought next quarter and the quarter after. And that's actually probably that's actually probably the best outcome. And then that's probably neutral dollar, neutral, to slightly bearish dollar. It's probably slightly bullish bonds. In other words, yields probably come down a bit. And stocks probably do well. Gold does well. Bitcoin does well um, in that. But but the Easier important thing is because financial conditions because your financial conditions loosen exactly. So yeah. uh, the U.S. government's going to stop crowding out global dollar markets for a quarter or two on a on a sequential basis. So <laughs> excuse me. The um, the nice thing as a trader is is you don't always get these sort of dates right like like. like a pre yeah. it's a pre-scheduled event given where we are this is a a pre-scheduled event uh effectively yeah. this quarterly refunding in my opinion okay uh you know the dollar already is uh, very loved up here luke uh, you you have like uh you know 90% bulls in the dollar gold and silver okay uh those three things uh I'm thinking that it's possible that dollar could be topping in here and not take out these highs. Do you think that's could that happen? Even if yields went to what you were talking about, like a new high yield in the long end, could the dollar uh, still be topping here? I don't think so. With the yields topping, I think the yields doing what they're doing will force the topping in the dollar. Um, I think they're okay. like it's super important that when you look at that chart of the dollar you know it took dxy at 112 114 to force treasury dysfunction right, then right. we right. fast forward a year and it took and dixie sideways. 107 to create the same roughly the same level of treasury dysfunction here we are dixie 105 106 105 last week when we had the terrible yeah. auction and that terrible yeah. bond action relative to stocks and gold and bitcoin and everything um Dixie 105 is causing, you know, uh, so it's good. less dollars, dollar. less dollar pressure is causing the same negative effect is on the treasury market. Takeaway? That's on the treasury. Ex All exactly. Right. And nothing's allowed to hurt the treasury market. So when it comes to choosing the dollar or the treasury market, they always choose weak in the dollar. And so okay. the treasury market, I think, is the catalyst for, you know, that that whether that's going to break out above it or not and okay you know we're we're close you're at four six seven four seven on the 10 year um yeah yeah you get another couple bad days you're almost a five and katie bar the door the dollar will go up in there but i you know if it if it breaks out it's not it's not going to 114 not unless okay. they're willing to stand May aside okay and there are some people talking between 108 and 110. Yeah, you know, I, you, I suppose that's that would possible. be like this you know, in uh, equality, you know, you had this and from here would take it up there. You, 108, you could, yeah, I mean, I suppose anything is possible. Um, what I can tell you is if it does, the S&P is probably going to be down five, five percentage points from where it trades today, um, yeah. at least. Uh, yeah. Tenure will probably be near five. NASDAQ will probably be down seven points, uh, percentage yeah. points, down seven percent. Uh, yeah. I think gold will be up. I think Bitcoin will be down. Um, so yeah, I don't have a strong. I mean, I would be. I my strong feeling is Treasury yields will dictate the dollar, 
not the other way around. And okay. that if it does do, if it does break out above the 23 highs, that is a, yeah. it's terrible for everything but the dollar and gold. Um, those are my convictions. Okay. I don't, I don't have, I'm not, I don't think it will break above that, but I, I, I you know, that's not okay. a strong view. Why don't we wrap it with uh, you explaining Triffin's dilemma to the viewers? Triffin's dilemma was something laid out by uh, economist Robert Triffin. I want to say it was in the 60s, but the gist of it is that if you use your national debt, your national sovereign debt as the settlement asset, um, your currency uh, as settlement asset, uh, initially you get an economic boom, but ultimately uh, your debt hits levels that call into question your solvency as a nation and trade and the monetary system begin to break down. And that's where we are, absolutely, where you can see everybody's questioning our debt. We can see in the markets that what we were just talking about right, with right. dollar rates, move index, treasury dysfunction, all of that is a symptom that the United States debt level has reached a point we cannot afford it without negative real rates. And if you're a creditor of the U.S., you have to be an idiot to hold debt who's, who, who, who's yielding below inflation. That's how you go broke as a nation. That's your reserves are bleeding out, um, especially when oil's doing what it's doing, right? If you're an right. oil importing creditor of the U.S., uh, your treasury bonds are falling against inflation, and they're really falling against oil. Um, and so you've got to switch to something else. And that's I think that's partly explained. That's partly what's driving gold is just this secular monster bid for gold that. It's been from central banks for 10 years. It's a really turbocharged in the last two. But um, <clears throat> Triffin's dilemma, we're, we're living, we're, we're living. living what Triffin laid out would eventually happen. You know, you know, Reagan proved yeah. deficits don't matter except in the long term. Well, like Reagan was president 40 years ago. It's here. Long term yeah. is 40 years. Here we are. Um, Luke, uh, oh, really great conversation i mean especially timely with what's happening and the juncture we're at in the market uh we you and i've been talking for years luke uh, i always learn from you and i really want to thank you for sharing your hard work uh for free when you come to face to edify our community and uh you should at least sign up for luke's uh you know free and uh and check out what he does uh from the forest to the trees and uh, go to fftt-llc.com and you could follow Luke on X at his name, at Luke Roman. And if you're not following Luke, you're missing a watchman in probably the most historic time in financial history of our country. So stay informed and uh, let Luke show you the forest from the trees. Thank you, Luke. Thank you for having me, Dale. I always enjoy talking with you, and I, yeah. I always learn a lot as well, so I, I appreciate yeah. it. Great conversation with my buddy, Luke Groman. Check him out, everyone. Uh, he's part of my intelligence gathering, so uh, very important uh, what he brings up here. We're talking about, uh, you know, like the first thing you have to learn to do in trading is how do you survive? Well, in this era that we're in, living through Triffin's dilemma, you also have to plan and prepare. And that's what Luke does for his people. So thank you, Luke. Great talk. Thank you, to Jeremy. Buddy. Likewise. Right. Have a great rest All of your right. week, bud. All right. My friend Luke Roman, everyone. And uh, you could catch the team in 15 minutes on the morning edge. Um, hope that you enjoyed, Luke, and that you got some decent ideas from us today. Good hunting, and most of all, don't just count your pips. Count your blessings. Adios, my trading warrior brothers and sisters. You're welcome, Laura, Ingmar. Luke is great, isn't he? All right. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Adios.
Hey traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video. Thank <laughs> you.